How's it going out there, YouTubers? Cybernex Shark here with another new movie review for you. So let's get right into this review and see what it's about. This previous Monday, I actually had gotten the chance to see two awesome films. Now, I've already done one review for the other movie, but I just finally getting around to doing another review for another awesome film I had seen on Monday. Now, this awesome film is another Oscar contender that has been nominated for at least two Oscars, and that is the film The Post. Now, The Post is based on true life occurrences, uh, loosely based, I would say, on what actually happened for this, you know, time frame and what, ha you know, and this occurrence that happened. But for the most part, I feel that the film is really pretty accurate and tells the story very truly and awesomely. Now, this awesome film has a great ensemble cast and also was directed by an amazing director. Now, that awesome director, of course, is the awesome Mr. Steven Spielberg. Now, Steven Spielberg has directed a whole bunch of slew of films, lots of Oscar-nominated films, you know, such as like Schindler List he directed. Uh, he's directed, you know, a whole bunch of other types of films. Uh, that, you know, are considered huge, big, blockbuster-type film like the Indiana Jones series and so forth. But a couple films I really enjoyed of his and thought that were really some of his best directorial type of films. And those such films are such films as the awesome and amazing 1975 horror film that brought a whole new terror to the ocean. That is the film Jaws. Now, I know a lot of people probably go, oh, Jaws, of course you're going to mention Jaws. But the fact of the matter is, this is probably one of his best all-time films. And it was over 40 years ago that this film was created. And just an amazing and, you know, a huge, you know, giant at the box office. But he did an amazing job with Jaws, simply for the fact that he took this robotic shark that he used for the film... And had so many problems with it, but still made a really awesome and terrifying film that literally spawned people to want to go and kill Great White Sharks, which is kind of horrible. At the same time, it's like, wow, people took this a little too literally. But at the same time, it still was an amazing, awesome Academy film. It's probably one of the few that have actually won a, uh, a, of a type of horror film that's really won for like best musical score. And it's just an all-around amazing film, and I think one of his best, you know, directing features. Another great feature that I feel that he directed the best was another awesome Oscar-nominated film that came out in 1998 and that was based on uh, real-life, you know, war. And that is the film Saving Private Ryan. Now, this awesome film, of course, also stars the awesome Tom Hanks, Matt Damon, uh, Vin Diesel... Um, a huge cast, but probably one of the most realistic and best and amazing real-life looking war film ever to date. I mean, this movie was just so amazing. They just did a really good job, really brought, you know, a whole new light to what war was like and made it very actual and factual, too, at the same time. And that was just an amazing movie. I can't emphasize enough. If you haven't seen that, definitely check it out. It's such worth a watch. Such an amazing film. So great, so awesome, but just superb. Now, with directing The Post, I thought Steven Spielberg did an amazing job. He did a, you know, a wonderful job of bringing to light this story about the Pentagon Papers and what The Post went through, you know, what its founder and its person at the time that was in charge, what they did with their reporters and all that stuff. He did a really fantastic job. He brought another true story to life and gave it a whole new meaning. It was such a powerful film, too, and he directed it so beautifully and just brought it, you know, to a wonderful and awesome level so that you could really understand and see what the power of what they did back in that time frame, back in the 70s, and, you know, what they were able to help and do for the, you know, the United States. It was just a really amazing, you know, directing feature and once again you know steven spielberg directed the t he did it once again made another awesome film so like i was saying before this movie has an awesome ensemble cast now to start off this awesome ensemble cast we have none other than mr the awesome woody himself from toy story mr tom hanks now tom hanks of course has been in a slew of films over the years from big 
uh, Splash to uh, Bosom Buddies on TV uh, to Turner Hooch. I mean, but he's been in a ton of great films. But a couple films I really enjoyed him in and thought he was really excellent in. Well, such films is also another awesome Steven Spielberg directed film, Catch Me If You Can, which is also based on a true story as well. And it's just a, one of those really awesome films, and I just and really enjoyed his character in it and just how well he brought to life that real person that was dealing with the the crazy atrocities that this one gentleman of his fake life was ruining and just what they did for the film you know he just he made the movie really awesome and brought you know a true um current contemporary you know impression of that character from that time frame he just did a really good job with that film and tom hanks you know played it to the t he was really awesome Another great film that Tom Hanks was in that I really enjoyed and thought he was super awesome in and just a real pleasure is, once again, another actually based on a true story uh, film that is loosely based on, you know, the real occurrence and stuff like that, but, you know, is very similar to what happened. And that's the film The Terminal. The Terminal, I feel, is such an underrated, awesome film. It should get a lot more credit for how good of a film it was. Everyone involved in the film was just super awesome. You know, from Catherine Zeta Jones to, you know, everyone else that was involved that just it made it it was a really good film. And just another great story that was very interesting to learn about and what that gentleman went through. And Tom Hanks, you know, really portrayed that character so well and gave us a whole new, you know, aspect of what that guy did go through. And with, you know, all of a sudden having no country and you're just like, oh, I'm stuck in this airport, you know. It was a really awesome and amazing film. If you haven't seen it, definitely check it out. Worth the watch. Really good. But in the post, Tom Hanks is once again a powerhouse and awesome actor. Once again, he brings to life Ben LaBelle so well, the one of the chief editors at the time for the post. And just made, you know, the character come to life and gave you an idea of what that character person went through and he just he brought the film together he made it really good Be, you know between him and Meryl Streep together working it just it was an awesome combo and just made a really great movie he was really awesome in it and I really enjoyed him and I thought he brought like I said once again brought another great flavor to an awesome character and person that you know we're learning about in history it was a really cool and awesome role we also have a film, of course, I mentioned her name just a moment ago, and that's of the awesome Os Oscar winner herself, Miss Meryl Streep. Meryl Streep has got to be one of the best all-time actresses in the universe. This woman, there is nothing she cannot do. She is one of the best actresses out there ever, and everything she's in I always enjoy because she's just so amazing. Even in films where she had a very small role, she's the one that caught my attention in the film because of how good of an actress she is and once again she did the same thing with this film but at the same time a couple movies I really enjoyed her in that I think she just was super cool and just you know showed her talent with such films as the awesome based on true story movie as well about Julia Childs and this other lady named Julia that wrote a book about Julia Childs and that is the film Julia and Julia which is a really great film. It was really interesting to see what this woman did and like how she made this like almost like this cookbook based on Julia Child's cookbook and just like about her life and stuff. I thought it was really interesting and fun. Lots of great comedy. Stanley Tucci was awesome in it playing Julia Child's uh, husband. It was just was a really fun film and it w once again showed how talented Meryl Streep is playing Julia Child's herself. Another great film that she was in that I absolutely thought was a great film was a great comedy film that Alec Baldwin starred in with her and also Steve Martin. And that's the film It's Complicated. It was a really awesome and funny film. Really well done by Nancy Myers. Uh, once again, showing Meryl Streep's great acting ability and also as a comedian too. I think she's absolutely funny in comedies and should do more comedies than drama because she is so perfect at it. And she just really, you know, brought her acting, you know, provided to that film and made it a wonderful and enjoyable film. Now, in the post, like I said, she brought it to the T. She played Catherine Grammer so amazingly. You really felt that that was really Catherine Grammer the whole time you're watching the film. 
And she just, you know, once again, I can see why she was nominated once again because of how great of an actor she is. But at the same time, she brought a great vulnerability to that character, showing you some of her, you know, certain sides for, you know, having to deal with her husband's suicide, having to deal with, you know, running the post and so forth. You know, she she brought a great and wonderful understanding of Catherine Grammer's life. And you really were able to really feel like you were there and seeing her life unfold. That's how good she was in the film. And she did such an amazing job. Really well done. She totally deserves the nomination. If she doesn't win, uh, I won't be shocked. But at the same time, she totally deserves the Oscar nom she got. She was so good in it. Another awesome actor that's in the film that I was really surprised was in the film was a, is an awesome guy that's like comedian slash drama guy that he's done pretty much everything and is just usually a good character actor. And that's Mr. Bob Odenkirk. Now, Bob Odenkirk, he's just amazing. And we all recognize from such like shows as uh, Better Call Saul and Breaking Bad. But a couple movies that he was actually in and also directed are some films that I really enjoyed by him. One of these awesome films is an awesome Will Arnett film, uh, lead film, that has uh, Dak Shepard in it and a couple other awesome comedians. And that is the film Let's Go to Prison. Now, Let's Go to Prison, I don't think gets enough credit for how funny it was. It was, like, super hilarious. And I was really bummed that it didn't do so well and that a lot of people didn't, you know, really get it. And I think, I absolutely think it was just so cleverly directed and written and i thought bob odenkirk was so freaking hilarious in it but also he did he directed it so well and made just a really great film it was really awesome and just a wonderful and well done film by bob odenkirk another film that he was in and that had kind of cameos but also directed was an awesome other movie that will arnett stars in and Kristen wig as well and that's the film brother solomon that movie is absolutely stinking hilarious. Both Will Arnett and his cohort that's in it are just super hilarious and funny. And just the whole movie is just so stupid, but at the same time, so freaking funny. It just it was so well done by Bob Odenkirk, and he his few parts that he has in it were so super funny as well. Just a really well rounded comedy film, and he did it so gracefully. But in the post, Bob Odenkirk was awesome. I absolutely loved his character of the reporter uh, that you know basically gets the Pentagon Papers for the post, and he just he played it so well. He, I love the serious aspect of his character in the film. How well he did at that and how he really brought together and gave us an image of what that character was like back during the 70s when this was all going on he did a really amazing job and he was a great part of the ensemble cast as well and just brought the whole movie together so also in this awesome film like I said, there was a huge ensemble cast. So there's a lot of honorable mentions that I would like to talk about too in the film, such as the awesome Sarah Paulson. She was also in the film playing uh, Tom Hanks' wife at the time, uh, character of that character he was playing. And I thought she did a decent job. It was probably the first time I've seen her in something where she didn't cry and was bawling. And I was really happy to see her in more of a pleasant role. And so I thought she did a decent job of playing that character. And, you know, once again, brought that whole ensemble cast to a wonderful, you know, and gave the film a great new presence as well. Another honorable mention uh, in the film is an awesome actor who I think is a very underrated actor. And he's really awesome. And he's been around for a while now. And he's done a lot of things over the t years and just, you know, kind of dumb, silly roles, too, at the same time. But that's Mr. Jesse Plemons. Jesse Plemons is just, he was really fun in it. He, Even though his part was pretty short, it still was an awesome kind of role. And it was fun to see him kind of interact in such a more serious role. And so I really enjoyed that. And I'm glad they cast him and had him in the ensemble cast. Really made the whole movie a full together. You know, and really brought it, you know, a whole new, uh, different presence of a film. And I thought it was a great, you know, choice to pick for that film. We also have the film, as another honorable mention, Miss Allison Brie. Now, Allison Brie, we all recognize from the show on Netflix, Glow, or as Dave Franco's girlfriend to be wife, or wife, I should say. But in The Post, she actually plays Meryl Streep's daughter, which I thought was really interesting. And she kind of had an accent in the film, so I was kind of 
like going, where is this accent coming from? Because Meryl Streep doesn't have an accent. Her character doesn't. So I was like curious as to why Alison Brie kind of had an accent in the film. At the same time, I really enjoyed her character. She played the daughter very interestingly, even though it was a very short role. It still was fun to see her in the film and kind of in a more dramatic role. Uh, definitely something I hadn't really seen her do a lot of. So it was very interesting and wonderful to see her in that and see her, uh, you know, broaden her horizons in the film industry. So that was really fun to see her in. We also on the film, uh, another awesome character actor that's been around for a long time. And that's Mr. Bradley Whitterford, who I absolutely think is hilarious. And he's probably one of the best villains in the Billy Madison film, which I think he was so super funny. But he was just really fun in it, too. He played his same, like, sarcastic kind of asshole character that he usually plays. And it was really fun to see him kind of in that capacity and role and bring into light, you know, that character that he played and kind of giving you an idea of what, you know, Catherine Grammer was going through being on a board with the majority of men versus her being this woman inheriting the company after her husband died, you know. It was a really cool and uh, a really awesome uh, role for Bradley Whitford. I thought it was really awesome. So if you're not familiar with what the post is about, Basically, what the premise of the film is, it revolves around Meryl Streep's character, Kathleen Grammer, basically about her having to deal with her everyday life and running the paper and having to make these big decisions about uh, a certain news article that, that uh, Tom Hanks' character wants to print and that they basically are going against the country and basically the outcome of what that all entails with them publishing that. And it, it just all encompasses that whole thing you know, uh, pre-Watergate incident with Nixon, pretty much. It was a really awesome film, really well done, really amazing. Uh, I was really impressed with it. It was very emotional and very enlightening. Uh, I'm so grateful that they made this movie and gave us a whole new light to what these newspapers went through and how important it is that these newspapers are still around and how we should give them some credit and, you know, pick up a copy here and there and read it because they put a lot of effort, these reporters, into these articles they write. And it just, it was a really powerful movie and I really enjoyed it. Definitely deserves its Oscar nom for Best Picture. Uh, just an all-around amazing movie. Giant 10 golden movie boxes up on this one, folks. Really well done. Uh, highly recommend it. Go check it out. It's worth the watch. Really well done. So that's it for this movie review, guys. As always, thank you for watching. Thank you for liking. As always, thank you for subscribing. And if this is your first time here and you haven't subscribed yet, or you've been here before and haven't subscribed, what are you waiting for? Hit that awesome subscribe button so you don't miss one of these awesome videos, people. As always, keep your eyes out for any older, newer videos you might not have seen mine yet. And as always, check out that awesome link down below about the awesome horror pack. Especially if you're a huge horror fan, who, what wouldn't you like better coming right to your door of either four DVDs or four Blu-rays of horror fun? And also, each box comes with a limited edition you can't get anywhere else. So if you're interested in signing up or are going to sign up for this, let me know down in the comments so I can hook you up with a discount on your first month, people. That's right, discount. And as always, catch you in the next one.